Hey guys, welcome to the Non-Power Gamers. Today we'll be talking about how to start Warhammer 40,000, specifically with Space Marines and Tyranids. Yeah. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so you're looking to start a new army. That's either going to be Tyranids, in my case, or, or Space, Space Marines. Marines, in Dylan's case. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that even if you're a veteran gamer, or a completely new person, sometimes when you're looking at the Citadel Miniatures line, or Games Workshop line, I should say, starting a new army can be a little a little daunting yeah, with the way definitely. all the units work and just how many there are, what to, what you uh, want to choose from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know exactly how you want to build your army, you just want to start collecting it. For sure. So that's what we're going to try to show you how to do in this video. Um, essentially what me and Dill have done today is we have made 500 point lists, mm -hmm. and we started 500 because that's really the smallest kind of points level yeah. of 40k you're going to be playing, other mm -hmm. than, you know, Kill Team, which is its own thing. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be looking to get into actual uh, Warhammer 40k, though Kill Team, is, Kill Team is a good place to start. Uh, and what we've done here, basically, is we've made 500 point lists. Mm -hmm. uh, how to get there, uh, mine is based off of the start collecting box, because yep. I think that's the probably a good starting point for everyone to have. It has a couple units that you definitely want to have in your army, and you have units from the Dark Imperium box. Yeah, so Space Marines technically do have a start collecting box, but it's all with the, uh, I don't want to say old, well, they're older, but the small right. Marines, the ones that aren't Primaris, and I think my list, especially the army that I've chosen, the new Space Marine army I've chosen, I started right when Dark Imperium came out, so I'm, they're Primaris focused. So what I did is I took some units from Dark Imperium, obviously, not all of those units that it comes with fit into the points limit of 500. We'll talk about how you can expand later. But uh, yeah, me and Nico, we have two different starting points. We thought, yeah, we could do something where, you know, one of us is Dark Imperium Space Marines and one of us is Dark Imperium Death Guard. But with him choosing Tyranids, it kind of gives you two of the different ways that a lot of people can get into Warhammer 40,000 because, you know, not every army has a box right. like Dark Imperium. Exactly. But almost every army does have a start collecting yeah, box. Exactly. I, I think only Gene Steelcrawl does have a Yeah, but it'll box. get one eventually. It'll get one they eventually. all do it's get in one the codex. eventually. It's in the codex. Yeah. <laughs> and even though there are some boxes that come out periodically that are comparable to Dark Imperium, like um, Gene Steelcrawl had one where yeah, it was against... Tooth and Claw. Yeah, Tooth and Claw. Wake the Dead. Yeah. So, things like that. But those are limited release, so those are kind of hard to come by. Right. So we're kind of trying to cover the box sets that are always out there, because even the Battle Forces, they're only there for like limited yeah, amounts of time exactly. as well. Exactly. So, yeah. What we did was we both constructed 500-point lists, like Nico said, mine being a primary Space Marine army. And basically what I did was I chose a select few units that would make how it works in Warhammer 40,000. For Space Marines, the simplest detachment, which was a patrol detachment. Obviously, with the point restrictions, I wasn't able to get the requirements for um, what the other, I guess, regular detachment, which is a battalion detachment. So what I did was I took the two five-man intercessor squads from Dark Imperium, which are troops, the Primaris Lieutenant from Dark Imperium, which is a HQ, the company, the Primaris Ancient, and then the Primaris Hellblasters, giving me around a 500-point list and a patrol detachment. And depending on what rules you want to play with, whether you're going to, in your first game, if you're a new player, you want to use all the stratagems or you just want to shoot each other off the board and see how the game works, right. or you're a veteran player, this does still give you three command points to play around with. And honestly, Dark Imperium is a is probably the best starting point for a Space Marine army, especially if you're focused on Primaris. We'll get into the list a little later about the specifics and stuff, but I just think Dark Imperium is such a great starting point, no matter what um, like sub-faction you want to do. It just gives you a really good backbone for any Primaris army. And now that those um, newer sets, like Shadow Spear, came out, I know as of recording this today, it's temporarily out of stock online on Games Workshop. It'll probably come back because yeah. it was so popular. Right. But even despite that being a thing, this I still think is a better starter set because it gives you a lot of the units that are still available outside of that box, you can get right. more of it without having to buy the same box. Exactly. They're kind of they're kind of hardier units too. Yeah. A little more simple because Shadow Spear, the Space Marine side is a lot of. They're specialist units. They're a lot of. They're very infiltrate-y. Yeah. You know, these guys are, are kind of going to be your bread and butter. Yeah, these are your standard troopers. Exactly. So if you're playing, if you're an old time player and you're kind of newer to the Primaris, Intercessors are kind of like tactical Marines, but you can't take special weapons. 
Hellblasters, I guess the comparable would be Devastators, even yeah. though the Devastators can take a range of weaponry, so it's not like one-to-one comparison, but I guess the role they play is very similar. Right. And then you have a whole host of new characters and stuff like that, but I guess the big point with Space Marines is they're an all-comers army, they're easy to learn, they're easy to paint, and I think everyone, like, everyone that you meet in Warhammer has a Space, has a space Marine army, because yeah, exactly. they're so easy to get into. Even, Nico has one, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Salamander. Just got one. Salamander, yeah. You but, guys have seen them. I think the cool thing about that is once you start your Space Marine army, for a lot of people, then they find their real love in the Warhammer universe, whether right. that be Imperial Guard, Tyranids, whatever army you want it to be. But Space Marines is a great way yeah, to start the hobby. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's... I mean, like 90% of the time, somebody starts the hobby, it is with Space Marines, just because of how they're advertised. Mm-hmm. They just get so much love for Heroes of the Shop. Humanity. Yeah, so much yeah. love. They're the poster boys, yeah. Ultramarines specifically. You could do a whole uh, army of Primaris exactly. lieutenants. Right. <laughs> now that those are all out. Uh, and yeah, they're a good starting point. And I think what's the most interesting is that you technically don't need to buy Dark Imperium to get this set. You can just piece them off of eBay. Yeah. Because that's something that a lot of people like to do when a set comes out it's is crazy. they yeah. <laughs> they they just take um they take the sets, the specific squads from the sets and then they sell them piece by piece on eBay. Yeah. For, I didn't sell them, I bought them like for that. For usually but. cheaper than normal. Because I think like people will sell them maybe for like twenty bucks for a squad of intercessors. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because if you buy like okay, so I don't know, Dark Imperium is like one sixty, right? Yeah, I think so. And if you split it with a friend to get the Death Guard side, that's eighty a piece. If you were to buy all the Space Marine stuff like on eBay, I think it would still be more than eighty. Yeah. But I think eBay is a good route if you don't want to. You don't want to spend that whole. Yeah, hundred sixty. If you have no one to split miles. it with, or right. you just want like, oh, I just want the intercessors, exactly. or, or I just want the character. Exactly. But I still, I still, we still got to support the local game store. So eBay is good, right. but it's uh, specific when yeah. you need specific things. Yeah, when you need specific things, always support your local game store uh, when you can. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Nico, you want to talk about how you uh, started your tyrants? Um. Yes. Uh, we will do. Uh, well, basically, I'll just start off by saying that I based what I have here on the start collecting box mm-hmm. because like I said when you don't really know how you want to build an army like if you go into an army knowing I want to build it like this or like that go for a certain build I want to do like jet bikes I want to do um, you know like a ton of Lehman Russes something yeah, for like sure. that then yeah obviously you don't really need to learn about a starting point but if you're just kind of like getting into it the start collecting box is usually a really good place to start collecting. And it's a good deal too. <laughs> exactly, it's a good deal. They got a little more expensive. They used to be, I think, around eighty dollars. Now they're like ninety. Yeah, depending on what box it yeah. is, it changes. They're not now, as good of a deal, but you it's know, still a deal. There's, it's still a deal. So I'll just get right into it. The start collecting box with the Tyranids used to come with a Hive Tyrant, Gargoyles, and Tyranid Warriors. They changed that, luckily, because you know, if, from that two of those three units people you, you'd never see on the table yeah i've never seen a gargoyle on the table yeah exactly but um so now what you get is you get 18 sealers you get a brood lord and you get a trigon um the trigon is a little uh, it's really specific it's a very it's a, yeah it's a very specific kind of model you have to like it i personally love them the trigon yeah, really cool the trigon i think is my favorite Tyranid model. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, he used to be Forge World. That's what's cool. He did used to. Be I think Forge that's the World. only model that's come from Forge World, and they've made plastic. Yeah, I just kind of. So. Co- it's pretty cool. There's actually. a couple out there, but yeah. yeah, he's definitely the one that I think of the most. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, just to note, I don't actually have the Broodlord model. I have the Patriarch. They kind of function as the same thing. So you know, he's a placeholder <laughs> there for now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so squad of Gene Stealers, great. Everybody loves Gene Stealers. They're really good. Mm-hmm. They run up the table. They're really an iconic unit. Yeah, they super they are. Um, and then from the start collecting box, uh, just to add on to that, to get to the 500 points, I added two units of Termagants. And that's going to be important for later, when you start really building into Tyranids, you mm-hmm. know, kind of like pushing uh, higher point games, because Termagants really are going to be your bread and butter troop. And Gene Stealers are troops as well, right? Gene Stealers okay. are troops in the Tyranid Codex. They're not in the Gene Stealer Codex. Got it, got it. Um, but they are troops in the uh, Tyranid Codex, okay. so they will be a troop option, but Termagants, you know, they're cheap, put them next to Synapse, they're fearless, they just get so much done, and having a ton of them is very useful. I only have 24, 
because I'd mostly run gene stealers. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a few more, but I think that um, buying two more boxes of termagants is the right move. So that'll put you at about, assuming that each, I think each box of termagants is thirty dollars each, mm -hmm. maybe like twenty nine, something like that. But we'll say thirty. Uh, so that's sixty dollars plus the ninety dollars you spend for the start collecting. That's about one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, it's good math. For a five hundred point, well, I hope I did it correctly. <laughs> I'm gonna be real embarrassed if I didn't. <laughs> Um, that's about $150, which, you know, if you're a little younger, that could be definitely be a lot. I know it was for me. I think that's the trade-off <laughs> you get with starting an army like Tyranids, which is more horde-based, right. in comparison to an army like Space Marines, where you have a lot less models. And I think that's one other thing that's very, um, you know, beginner-friendly about Space Marines. Yes, it's cheaper, definitely. and, you know, there's a lot... They can play in a lot of different ways where Tyranids play like very specifically. Right. You know what you're getting it yourself in. You don't really know what you, actually you don't know what you're getting yourself into because there's a lot of ways to play them. And it's it, it's harder to play them, especially as a newer player. But if you've played other armies or this is your second army, you probably won't have too much of a issue yeah. with it. It is a little more expensive though. It it is definitely a little more expensive because you just you do have to put out money for just the number of models that mm -hmm. you're going to put out there. Um, but you know, 150 for a little starting point isn't that bad. You know, you're going to be spending more anyways. This, yeah, sure. this hobby is expensive. very expensive. Yep. But um, yeah, so that's really it for the Tyranid side. That's like the best advice I can give based off the start collecting. Just you know, two boxes of Ligons. That's all you need because that'll give you a little bit of chaff going into the higher points. It'll give you a little bit of utility. Um, how you load them out is up to you. Uh, I've got one squad here with flesh pours and one squad with devourers. Those are just how they're modeled. I didn't actually load them out like that for the list. Um, but yeah, I think it's that's honestly a perfect starting place because I think it'll give you the widest range of options available for future lists and army sure, builds. Sure. So do you think Tyranids is like a good army for beginners, or do you think this is something that's better for someone who's played a while or maybe played other tabletop games? Um, it's hard to say. Because I started with Tyranids. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I started with Tyranids way back, and I was really young. Um, oh, were you like fifth grade or something? Yeah, fifth grade, something like that. We were, and $150 was a lot to me, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes when you see that army you just really love, yeah. you just, you gotta go for it. Yeah, cause... That's what I'd say. I would say if you're a beginner, don't worry about how hard an army seems to start. Like, you're gonna get more enjoyment out of the game if it's just... An army that you really truly love and vibe with. Mm -hmm. You gotta love the look, or you gotta exactly. love the lore. Right. But there's also a caveat to that. You do have to be realistic about you know how much time and effort you want to put into it. So right. if you do start with Tyranids and like you are kind of turned off by the amount of painting, that could be an issue. But you know it just depends what you like most out of the hobby, or if that love for the faction is gonna like push you over the edge of you know getting yeah. over all the painting you have to do. Exactly. But, you know, if you truly love the faction though, you'll put up with it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's, that's what fair. I say, that's yeah. what I did, you know. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, so that's the 500 point list. I guess we're not gonna go over the list. We'll go over the actual lists in the battle report video mm -hmm. that we're gonna do. Um, Cause we're gonna, we're gonna release a video beside this one. It'll be a 500 point battle report just to show these small armies in action because mm -hmm. you know some people don't really know like how they should play yeah and then you at get such a small points level yeah you get a little taste of what the army yeah. is like and it's like and to show that you can you know play a game like this play yeah. a game at this small points it's not always it'll, it doesn't always have to be 2k yeah exactly yeah you, know? you don't know like i know tournaments you know are around that point range like 17 15 mm -hmm. to 2000 but, but if, you know, you're, if you're just starting you shouldn't yeah and you, you can play lower tournament. point games unless it's, it's just, a fun tournament that's like trying to get you into the yeah game, exactly you know but um yeah because people there are really generally like they don't have time to teach you mm -hmm. uh, how to play um so yeah, so we'll go over the actual lists in that video. Uh, we are going to go a little bit further into this. We're mm -hmm. going to expand into a thousand points um, from what we have here. Yeah. Uh, I know that I, I have a few more units that I would say that I could recommend to buy and uh, so does Dill. Yeah, so, so uh, we'll uh, come back in a little bit and uh, talk about that. All right, so we went over the 500 point lists. You've got your 500 point list and you have it all nice and painted and you're raring to go. Mm -hmm. But you also want to expand a little further, get you know a few more big games in, see what, good Warhammer, yeah. see what Warhammer 40K is really about. Uh, so we're just gonna talk about kind of the units that we would recommend going into the kind of thousand point level. Uh, so Dill, why don't you uh, take it from here? 
Yeah, so pretty much what I decided to do with the Thousand Point was kind of expand from some of the units that you get with Dark Imperium, but I also wanted to expand a little outside of that because, you know, the Dark Imperium units are very similar. The only ones that I didn't include in my five engine point list were the Gravis Captain as well as the um, Inceptors. I don't usually use Inceptors in my army, so I didn't include those into my 1000 point list. You can easily and replace them with one of the other units that I added, but basically what I added for the Force was I added the Gravis Captain that you get in the set, which is actually my favorite model from Dark Imperium. He's just such a beefcake. Yeah. And he has, there's a really cool relic that you can give him for um, Ultramarines. And I just enjoy how tough he is, and that Boltstorm Gauntlet in Melee is really good. He's a true hero. Yeah, he is a true hero. He <laughs> took out this Trigon in our first game of 8th edition, so. You don't have to tell him that. Yeah, I had to tell him that. But um, the way I expanded it was. I know in my 500 point list I was not able to um, create a battalion, so that was my first goal. I wanted to go from a tr patrol detachment, which is only giving you the 3 CP from being Battleforged, and expand that into a battalion detachment where you get 3 CP for being Battleforged, as well as 5 CP for being a battalion. So you pretty much double your CP plus 2, and then you just have a lot more resources to work with in order when you're doing all your stratagems, especially at bigger points games where you'd be using stratagems a lot more. Right. It pays to have as many as you can. So other than the Gravis um, Captain, I added a third troop, which is the other um, requirement because you need at least two HQs and three troops. I added a Scout Squad, and Scout Squads are really versatile. I know a lot of players who um, you know kind of mix in with their Primaris. If you aren't leaning towards intercessors for your troops, a lot of people will use scout squads, and that runs you about like 25 bucks, between 25 and 30 bucks. Yeah. And there's two sets. There's the normal ones without camo cloaks. Basically, they have either bolt pistols and their uh, little combat knives or bolt guns. And then you have the uh, separate box, which has camo cloaks and sniper rifles. I decided to do the sniper rifle ones because I like the models more, and it kind of fits the way I play them, where I just sit them on an objective all game, and they just shoot their snipers. So basically what I did was I gave um, five scouts, all with camo cloaks, four sniper rifles, and one missile launcher. Super easy. Only 80 points of my 1,000 point list. Um, just one thing to note though, with sniper rifles, they are a little more expensive, and they do only actually come in under five points from an intercessor squad. And an intercessor squad actually, I would say, does more damage throughout the game. Yeah. You can't target characters the way sniper does, but... They kind of... Um, they're hardier. Scar scar scouts are hardier in... Uh, they're also hardier in um, cover. That's they have true. one wound. Because of, of the camo cloaks. But intercessors are... you know, Two, two wounds, two three wounds. save. Yeah, exactly. Generally, they'll accomplish more. More. Yeah. yeah. But just to like put some variance on the list, I decided to go with that. Yeah. And then what also I did was... I added one of my favorite models from the Primaris range, the Redemptor Dreadnought. And the cool thing about that is... If you're a new player or you're someone who doesn't like building, there's an easy to build one, mm -hmm. which gives you the out, uh, the loadout of the uh, big Gatling cannon and the uh, little heavy flamer on its wrist. You could always just cut that off and put a little Gatling cannon on it. That doesn't come with the set, but if you wanted that, you could. And it's only like, I was looking at the sprue online, it's only like eight pieces. Where oh, the Redemptor Dreadnought, oh wow. if you make the regular like one, a thousand. is like a thousand pieces, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't realize that. It was fun to put together, I guess, but because it it's a little more poseable. If I were to buy more, I'd buy the easy to build ones yeah, because same. they're just and they're cheaper. <laughs> they're like twenty bucks cheaper. So I added that as well for a, uh, an elite choice, and then my final addition to the force was another five Hell Blasters. I know with a lot of Primaris armies, um, I think the one thing they struggle with, unless you have the Repulsor tank, which it does the do the same does do anti tank pretty well. It is expensive though, yeah. and it draws a lot of fire. But hell blasters are probably your best bet for I'd say anti tank and then heavy infantry, especially yeah. when you overcharge them. They're really good. They uh, do a lot of damage and they bypass a lot of armor. You can kill yourself if you roll one, but just don't roll once. Just don't roll once. But uh, yeah, so I had another five hell blasters. You don't get ten hell blasters in Dark Imperium. I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that. So. A good way to do that is if you want to um, end up with 15 overall, you could buy the $60 set of 10 Hellblasters, or you could buy a Combat Squad set, which is, I think, $35? It's like half the price. It's yeah. half the price, yeah. It's either 30 or 35 because I think they do want you to buy the 10 box set, yeah. because if you buy the two fives, it's a little more expensive. Yeah. But if you want to save some money and just want five more, you can buy the Combat Squad set. Right. Or you just buy another five off uh, EBIT, like right. we mentioned earlier. Exactly. So... Wonderful place. Yeah, so with Space Marines, 
with Primaris, right now you're kind of limited on the amount of units you can take just because the range is smaller than the overall Space Marine range. However, with the addition of Shadow Spear, hopefully that'll come back in stock and more, you know, in a more wider release soon where the units are available separately. But right now, Primaris, you're a little limited, but that's good if you're a new player. You don't have to worry about too many units. You can get really used to those units and you can kind of like get used to the game as well as just get used to playing with Space Marines. Right, exactly. So, Nico, how did you expand your Tyranids to 1000? All right, so expanding Tyranids to 1000, it's not that hard because kind of like what I'm going to talk about here is kind of adding a couple like big monsters, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I know the Tyranid mentality is usually a horde, which is good. The big monsters are so cool. The big monsters are cool, and again, I'm just going to say units that I think have the best usability overall. Mm -hmm. Like, the ones that you're going to want expanding into 2000. Um, so, to start off, first things first, get a Hive Tyrant. Yep. Because, one, they're really cool. Probably they're, the most iconic Tyranid unit? Probably the most iconic. Maybe the Carnifex is a little more iconic, but definitely Hive Tyrants. Oh, I know, that's tough. Or Gene Stealers. Uh, or Gene Stealers, yeah. yeah that's hard. That's yeah, hard. It, it's a tough one. Yeah. But Hive Tyrants are absolute bosses. Yep. Recommend you load them out with the wings, because, you know, yeah. that's what everybody does. Yep. Uh, you need it, the wings. They just, you need the wings, yeah. Because maybe if, like, he was walking and he had nine wounds, then maybe we could talk about, like, a walking one. But the wings are very important. They just give him... Wait, like, how many wounds do they have? They have 12. Oh, yeah, you need the wings. Yeah, you need the wings. <laughs> you need the wings. Because, like, for one, like, I could see for going for some... Like, you don't need the wings, you know, do whatever you want, obviously. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, from a gameplay standpoint, the wings, very important. For sure. Um, and the Hive Tyrant is also going to be your second HQ choice that uh, you're going to have, which will make this, like Bill said, a battalion. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Hive Tyrant, definitely a must. How you load him out with doesn't, like, really matter. The one that's always standard is the... Rending claws because they're free, mm -hmm. and then the uh, devourers. Yeah, those are the really two good. devourers, which are twelve shots, strength Ugh, six. So gross. MIP. Just a little, like he just he's a psyker. He flies. He's a giant monster. He can tear stuff up. He's just an overall beast of a unit, and mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna want a hive tyrant if you're playing mono nids. You know, dude, that's such a bonus. Like having a big creature being a psyker. Yeah, exactly. That's annoying. It's yeah. so annoying. He's he's cool. Yeah. He's cool. I love him. Uh, and then going on from there, we will have, uh, I bought another box of Gene Stealers, mm -hmm. so that'll be eight more to Crucial. put the Gene Stealers up to 16. Nice. And that's because Gene Stealers function really well when there are uh, 10 or more in yeah. the squad. So, you know, buying another box, uh, it's kind of weird that they come in eights. Yeah. That, that, that's from I think just old GW. Yeah, that's, yeah from old, I that's from old GW. Because mm -hmm. actually, you know, the Gaunts, funnily enough, used to come in boxes of eight. But they're 12 now, right? Now they're 12. Yeah. Like, it's so weird though. That it, it's very odd, but yeah. um, but yeah. So another box of Gene Steel is running about another thirty dollars. And by the way, this is U.S. currency. It's probably how the sprues are. I would yeah, say. yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah but I mean, they could just fit another sprue in there, and then and maybe twelve Gene Steelers per box. That's fair too. I'd pay a little more for twelve Gene Steelers per box, but eh, that's just me. It is what it is. Um, but anyways, but yeah, like I was saying, this is U.S. currency. Okay. Uh, so you might have to do some conversion over to your country. If you're watching <laughs> this from a different country, like Zimbabwe. Um, but yes, yeah, I've never been to Zimbabwe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so eight more gene steal, eight more gene stealers will push the squad up to sixteen. Nice. A nice little, uh, you know, a threat, a threat. They're they're, they're scary. They're truly a threat. Because um, you know, gene stealers under ten are they're still scary. They'll tear stuff up, but when they get to over ten, they start uh, start wiping stuff off the board. Yep. <laughs> um, and then one thing I added here to get to a thousand because I had an extra thirty points. Um, and I, I was thinking of what could I do for 30 points that wouldn't require you to spend more money. <laughs> I already know what you Which, uh, you could do a lictor. I really like lictors, but again, that's something else you gotta buy. But from all the boxes you have, you should have enough to make three Ripper Swarms. Because I think you might need an extra base, uh, an extra 32. Oh, you're saying base. from the bits that you get, you can make Ripper Swarms? No, like they come with Ripper Swarms. Because each Gaunt box comes with a Ripper Swarm base, like enough to make one Ripper Swarm. That is so random. Right. I it didn't it, even it is that. a little random, but each Gaunt box comes with enough to make one Ripper Swarm. So you have two. Oh, really? The Gene Stealers that. actually come with Ripper Swarms too. They just don't give you a base to build them. So then by then you should have three Ripper Swarms. That is so weird. And that's a squad. And that's, you know, a fourth troop choice. And, you know, they're funny. They're funny little worms. <laughs> I, just I don't go. think I've ever... 
I've seen you use them. <laughs> Just go around. I don't usually. They good. They're good for objective. They're good for no one can see them. Yeah, exactly. And people will forget you have them. Yeah, exactly. Like they're just there to just like win games for you. Like yeah. they really are the true heroes. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it'll just push you to the thousand point limits, so, yep. and you don't got to spend any extra cash. Um, and then I do have one more thing in the heavy support slot, and that is an exocrine, because the exocrine is disgusting. Yeah, it's. Because we're getting into a thousand points, and that's where people can start really packing on the firepower. Mm -hmm. And as Tyranids, you're gonna want something to fire back. You could go with Hive Guard. Mm -hmm. That's the obvious answer. Like I guess, I, yeah, I guess you could pick Hive Guard. It would actually extra be extra cooler. It would right? actually be a little cheaper. But to me personally, I think one Exocrine will do more. It'll do it'll do more for you than one unit of hive guard for will, sure. For sure, in my opinion. Also, people like you know, if you go for hive guard, people know what you're about. <laughs> people know what you're trying to do because like hive guard is just the all star unit. <laughs> the dark creepers of Tyranids. Not to say the exocrine isn't a beast too. The exocrine is also actually pretty disgusting. Yeah. In some cases, better than hive guard. I'd say. Well, I uh, questionable. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It, it's hard, but yeah, he, he's uh, good. But I just picked him because you know, nids are. A really good close combat army, but they do have some nasty shooting. And Warhammer Forty K is unfortunately a shooting game. Yeah. So you got to be shooting back at them, and uh, I just think the Exocrine does that the best. For sure. And For that'll sure. push you at the way I have my list written. I won't go over the specifics. Is at about nine hundred ninety nine points, mm -hmm. which is you know perfect for a one thousand point game. But it's nine hundred ninety nine. Yeah, but you know, as long as it's under, it's fine. That one point's going to make the big difference. It, it always does. <laughs> it always does. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. From there, building is like, we, we just kind of gave you the core units that we yeah. think are good to have. From there, it's really up to you. Mm -hmm. If you want to go like gun heavy with the nids, you want to get hive guard, exocrans, terran effects, like to get to that 2,000 points, all you. Yeah, I think just one key thing is just from a list building perspective. Just get a battalion detachment, right? So you have the command points and a good basis of just troops and HQs, and then branch out from there because you know all these armies have a lot of, you know, unit options unless you're Harlequins or something like that or Custodes, but these two have a lot, honestly. And you don't have to just exactly. necessarily stay with all Primaris. You can go with the Little Marines too. You know, they need yeah. some love still. Yeah. And uh, the Tyranids have a ton of unique options, so they're really great. Yeah. So it's really up to you. Like Nico said, um, they're both super fun armies. And like we said, for uh, episode two of this, we'll be doing a 500 point battle report to show you guys just a little taste yeah. of what these armies do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. So I guess the only other thing is uh, we just want to know, would you guys want us to do a battle report of one, of our 1,000 point yeah, list? Yeah, because we're not going to do a 1,000 point battle report because we think it might be a little redundant, you know, like not really needed. Mm -hmm. But so if you guys want to see it. If you guys want to see it though, we can always, we can always it, do if that. If you want to see it at the 1,000 point level. Or uh, let us know if you guys want us to do like the same type of video about maybe some other armies that we have. Right. Or um, any other things that you'd like to see us do. But yeah. other than that, uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. All the stuff is in the links in the bio. And uh, I think we're going to put a few of the things that we mentioned, like the Dark Imperium. We'll link that in the bio, too, if you're Definitely. a new player, just so you can see that. And maybe uh, price compare, do some price comparisons and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, thanks for watching.